Alright guys, so today we're talking about Battlefield 2042, and I ignore the fact that it sounds like I have candy in my mouth, because I'm putting about as much effort into this video as they put into the first year of this game. And so it's been a year since this game launched, and this third season just came out, so I figured now would be a good time to kind of hop in. This is going to be their peak player count for pretty much the rest of the game's life, as it's coming up on that one year point and a new season, releasing with new content. So let's look at what we've missed over this year and kind of re-look into the game as a whole. So one of the primary problems people had with this game when it launched was the lack of weapons. And so if you look here, everything that's grayed out is a new weapon that's been added in the past year. I want to say it comes out to like 10 weapons roughly along with some new gadgets like concussion grenades, throwing knives, and a smoke ability that I don't exactly remember the name of. But ultimately, over a year of weapons, if you take comparatively something like Call of Duty, this is essentially what it would come out to as well, with a typical four seasons and a Call of Duty year of progression, at least that's what they've tended to do, with two weapons in each battle pass, so that also comes out to around 10 guns within a year. So as far as the progression within said year, it's on track with other games in the same genre. That being said, it doesn't make up for the lack of guns that were there at launch. There's new vehicles, but really they don't add anything new or unique that the base vehicles don't already do. Another big complaint was the operator system. Instead of having assault, engineer, medic, and sniper like most Battlefield games do, they went for their hero shooter type Rainbow Six Siege lookalike that they have here with each character that is has unique abilities. While rocket launchers and medkits and ammo crates are still available to every class within the game, these classes have unique abilities that are special to each one of them. Now Battlefield 2042 faced the problem of having operators that are relatively generic on launch. Somebody with different types of grenades, a shield, a, a sentry gun, a drone, stuff like that that Sure, it's cool, but ultimately, it's not unique enough to make up your core operators and really the dynamic gameplay that you're choosing to opt out from the typical classes. And so, what they've added are three new operators, one that has a guided rocket launcher, which isn't really, I would say, worthy of a new agent, specialist, hero, operator, whatever you want to call them. Really, you could just add that as a new weapon for anybody to use, so I'm already going to go ahead and rule that one out, and after using it, it's really not that good, not that cool. I wouldn't even use this character anyways. From there is the season I decided to skip out on, which has my favorite operator in the game, a guy that works much like the Chonka, keeping on with the Rainbow Six Siege comparison. He has a mounted, shielded minigun. It's great, it's OP, it's not too OP though, because it has a small slit you can shoot through if you have a marksman rifle or a sniper rifle or if you're just a good enough shot, and so it keeps it balanced as there is a way to take it out, as well as any placed rocket or tank round or helicopter rocket will also take this out but it's useful and unique enough to where it feels like you're actually doing something different than what the rest of your team is doing. Now the final new character they've added in this newest season, you have to level up in the Battle Pass 2 unlock. And I couldn't be asked to get that high in my session of recording, so I grinded to it at a later session. But essentially he has an air burst rifle that just pushes people out from behind cover. It's a glorified grenade launcher attachment, okay? Again, this should not be a new operator. This could have been added to every single grenade launcher in the game, or just added as a new a new weapon, a new rocket launcher that anybody could use. This isn't justifiable as a new character, so they've added one decent new character in a year's time. Now, speaking of progression and unlock, let's talk about how you unlock things. Now, we've referenced the battle pass that you have to get each of these characters through the battle pass well, unless the season's over and then you get them for free, like the first two that I mentioned already. But within the battle pass is also your typical battle pass stuff, skins and vehicle attachments and character camos and weapon skins and you know all of that typical good stuff that all looks like trash and other than Fortnite really no game has really lived up to the hype or had anything worth purchasing or even looking at in their battle passes. Now all of this new content is free and it's great but the store is here they finally put stuff in the store so there is paid content again nothing I would ever pay for honestly stuff if it was free I wouldn't even equip. I have skins in this game that I just don't equip. Battlefield, for what it is for me and what I feel it's supposed to be is this immersive military sim style experience without getting too much into something like squad or a mil sim like that. So I'm not going to run around with my hexagon camos on all of my vehicles. That's just not my thing. I'm fine with all of the defaults. Now let's talk about the final thing with progression and unlocks and all of this new stuff that I think is probably the worst part. That's what you have to actually do 
to unlock the things you want to use the most, which is going to be the weapons and the vehicles. You have to do some of the most tedious shit to get some of this stuff. Like, there's a new tank, a futuristic tank, like a railgun tank. That seems cool. That seems like it fits in the setting of the game. It might actually be unique to the rest of the gameplay. Let me try to get it. Oh, we have to destroy four LATs and 13 troop carriers and four jets just to unlock the damn thing, and then I have to go through its progression to unlock all the things within it. I'm not doing all that. I don't have the time for that. I don't care that much. For a game that needs to keep as much of its small player base as possible while bringing in as many new people as possible, it hides its coolest and newest stuff behind really tedious unlocks. And I get it. You have to have progression. People like me need progression. I would complain if it was free in an instant unlock. It would piss me off because what the hell am I playing for? But it can't be so tedious that you don't want to do it. Because I play some grindy shit, right? I did every single activity inside mission in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 111 hours. I stacked rocks for 111 hours. But you can't ask me to destroy vehicles in this game. That, in the number it asks you for, and the specific types of vehicles, just put destroy vehicles. 10. That's fine. I'll do that all day. But I'm not hunting down specific vehicle types. It's, I'm not doing that. That's absurd. Speaking of that, they added a new map. The new map, absolute dog shit. The first map they added was really good. I've talked about it. I've done a video on it. It has really good vertical distance, it's completely separate, it's like split in half, well it has a really cool middle lane that connects the two, it works really well for vehicles on every single lane, you can snipe from the top lane to the bottom lane, it works perfectly, it's all blended together really well. This map, shit, it's flat, it looks boring and generic, it's incredibly unbalanced, it's just not great. So that's pretty much all of the new stuff they've added over time. Now I went and checked out Battlefield Portal, because if you don't remember what that is, that's what pretty much allowed you to play other Battlefield games within this Battlefield game through official and custom player hosted servers. And so this was the stuff that was most fun when the game launched. And the sad part is that the most fun thing in the new game is just playing the old games, but it is what it is. So I went to go check this out. There were two servers on the day of the new season that had more than like four people in them. So it's pretty much dead. It's unplayable. Right, so portals, you can't play, it's, uh, you gotta wait in a queue to get into a lobby with people in it, or just play by yourself, I guess. The new map sucks, so you have Conquest, Rush, which they've added, which is, is nice, and Breakthrough, right? The map rotation is dog shit, because the original maps, for the most part, are dog shit and still broken, so there's no point in playing those. The new map 24-7, Spearhead or whatever it's called, is dog shit, so you can't play that. And now let's get into my final point, they cut the player fucking count in half. What's the whole point of Next Gen Battlefield? 128 players, 64 v 64. And this isn't even a new thing. My video that I made like six months ago, they did this six months ago. It was filled with bots. When it was 64 v 64, it was like 20 v 20 and the rest was fucking bots, right? Then they decided, you know what? Forget it, remove the bots, and we're gonna make it 32v32, just 64 players, just like it used to be on the fucking Xbox 360, right? So that's where they went with it. And the only way to play 124 players, the whole mode the goddamn game was made for, is to play Battlefield Portal, which only has two people playing it! So do you get, do you get my problem? We're in this generation of next-gen games, right? That's this whole thing. Higher frame rate, upgrades, remasters, you know, new software and hardware and all this good stuff, right? But to play the new settings, the only mode you can play the new settings in is the old games. And if you want to play the new game, you gotta play in the old settings. Do you see how little fucking sense that makes? So this, coupled with the minimal content that has been added, and the quality of the content that has been added, along with just things that haven't been fixed, like the UI. Why is there so much shit on my screen? Along with, like, customizing your gun. I don't think I have a clip of me doing it, but customizing your gun in-game, it's so fucking confusing. Give me a green line and a red line. I don't need all these words on my screen. It's, oh my god, I'm gonna have a mental breakdown talking about this game. Okay. But that being said, 
you can still have Battlefield fun, and this hasn't changed from launch, and this is why I gave this game a higher score than a lot of other people. You can still fly around in a helicopter and take people out, you can still shoot down helicopters with an RPG, get in your tank and roll them through the side and flank the enemies and blow them to bits, push an objective and taking out the enemy tanks with 30 guys shooting at you. You can still do Battlefield things, but the problem here is that this was supposed to be new and innovative technology with the Battlefield things. That was the only positive this game had going for it. Everything else was negative. But now that it's reverted back to those old settings, the 360 era, you can go play all of the fun and honestly better experiences in past Battlefield games and get the same Battlefield experiences. And the fact of the matter is that this is going to be the highest high the game is at. It's had a year of peak turnaround time, a full year of full effort of trying to fix the game and get it to the best possible state it can be in. That being that it's also a new season for the game, it's third season so they can take into account, you know, player feedback on things they did wrong in the first and second one and fixing and tweaking the battle pass and the progression and all of that stuff. Along with it being added to Game Pass and the reference to Portal, this is the highest player count the game is going to have, and probably has had in a while. And so, that all being said, and comparing that to things like Battlefront 2 and where that was after a year, you really can see that this game just hasn't moved in the way it needed to, to bounce back. Now, I'm not saying in like another two years this game won't come back and be like the new Battlefield to play, and everyone won't be playing Battlefield 7, they'll be playing this. That could very well happen with games as a service you never know every game could always come back but just on the route that they're on now and the way things are going currently this ain't it chief but i hope you guys enjoyed this one let me know if you're still playing battlefield if you have revisited it at all since launch what you thought of it originally and i'll see you guys on the next one